school's out at the moment on holiday, but the results of a fascinating Victorian experiment prove that doesn't matter. Kids will learn anywhere, anytime, even maths and history. The key is an iPod and other computers. And as Jonathan Creek reports, suddenly learning is easy. They came out with better grades. They looked at my marks and they said I improved my tongues. These students are at the forefront of a classroom revolution. It's better than having to do it in a textbook. Textbooks and chalkboards are out. The new way to learn is all about computers, iPods and digital interfaces over the internet. You can upload lessons off of StudyWiz, um, put them onto iTunes and then download it onto your iPod and then you've got the lessons. And that could be, you could do that from anywhere in the world? Yeah, just as long as there's a computer. Put simply, what these devices are providing is a way for students to carry all their books, videos of their classes and even notes in their pockets at all times, which means no matter where they are, they can still be learning. And it's a model that's producing some dramatic results. I forget things easily, but when I listen to my iPod, like, I get my memory back. For the last six months, a grade of Year 8 students at Heathmont Secondary College has been involved in a trial to see if technology that interests them would help them learn. Assessed by the Victorian Department of Education, the report cards hold the answers. A couple of grades, a grade or two, it's pretty good. It improved by 30% than I used to get, so it was way better. Teaching is all about communication and what the iPod is, is an additional way of communicating. Maths teacher Sally Bodo was part of the iPod pilot and says it's vital that teaching methods move with technology to keep kids interested. Some kids struggle to get their information from books. In fact, most kids, they can't just read a book and uh, understand what the information is. They also, some kids struggle um, to focus on a lesson all the time. They sort of zone in and out and um, so they miss bits at, in the lesson. And it's those kids that this approach to learning targets. Some students didn't change, some students did significantly better. They actually complained because they felt that they were overloaded and um, the, the people who did our research for us said that they thought that that was probably because um, they were actually engaging in higher order thinking. So they found it more work, possibly because they had to think a bit harder. What teachers have found is that students are actually uh, far more engaged using this technology. Jeff Alwood is the head of eTech Group, the Australian designers behind the StudyWiz learning platform. It demonstrates that uh, this new way of teaching and learning actually uh, does increase uh, student uh, attention spans does increase uh, student output it actually helps improve student behavior as well because the kids are more engaged as well so uh, yeah very exciting from our standpoint he says this type of learning is taking off around the world and could soon be commonplace it was always regarded as enough to just sit the kid in front of a book sit there and read well their concentration spans are completely different now kids brains nowadays are actually quite different to uh, those of 20 30 years ago because of the way that students are interacting in a digital world well, this kind of technology could not only replace books, but potentially could replace laptops as a, uh, a form of medium for communicating with students through a classroom environment. I used to listen to them just before I went to sleep. Yes, yeah, so and then they'd be in my brain for the morning. It can be a very powerful addition to a teaching program. There's no question this is the way of the future. Jonathan Creek, our reporter.